Yesterday, uh, uh, Jacob Frankel, Jamie Dimon talked about Fortress J.P. Morgan. We all know that Mr. Dimon from the Bank One Days talks about a good balance sheet. How's the balance sheet of Fortress America right now? We've had a tax cut. Now we've got a guns and butter budget like you and I have never seen. What is the state of fiscal America that you observe? There is a short-term issue and a medium-term issue. I start with the medium-term and the long-term. Uh, our demography is, of course, determining the long-term situation. If you look at the structure of the federal budget, you see that because of aging, a very large proportion of the budget goes to healthcare and related matters like this, which means that the discretionary budget that is left for everything else is very limited and declining. This means that as we get a few years down the road, there will be no way to avoid the tough question of changing the nature of the contract between citizens and their government. There is no way that the government can provide the citizens what is promised without charging the citizens to pay for it. What it means in a short language is entitlement. There is no way that in the long run the United States and many other countries can continue to sail with fiscal uh, health without reducing the amount of entitlements which are now uh, there in the system. What it means is that this hot potato will need to be addressed uh, sooner than later, even though it will haunt you only in the long run, responsibility of policy requires to address it already now. It requires courage, it requires responsibility, it requires <coughs> looking straight in the eyes of the citizens and say, ladies and gentlemen, we must change the rules of the game and it yeah. comes to retirement age, it comes to various issues of that type. That's I, the long run. I, I don't the want... The short run. Well, I don't want what you was to... important was, yes... Well, excuse me, we got a delay here, so we're a little bit of interrupting. Dr. Frankel, I don't want you to do a single point, 10-year estimate like John Norman would do off your London desk, but I want you to suggest to us your reading of history of nations that have done what the United States is doing. Is it a glide path to higher interest rates, or is it a jump condition where one day you just wake up with higher yields? In a world of transparency, there should be as little surprises as possible. And therefore, we are not going to expect to have suddenly a burst of uh, new re reality. But rather, it's going to be gradual, and the Fed hopefully will also navigate in this direction. And the fact of the matter is, it has to be bolstered by strong supply-side economics. And therefore, I'm a strong supporter of the reduction in the corporate tax rate and of the measures that induce business sector to expand. That's the only way you can induce people to invest, to hire, to improve jobs, and to increase the number of jobs. And once this is there, optimism will also come to the economy. Tax revenue will also come to the economy. And the willingness of the citizenship to participate in the longer term challenges, including adjustment of the entitlements. But this requires showing results in the beginning. Hope is not a strategy. You must show results. You know, Francis Bacon once said, hope is a fantastic breakfast. It's a terrible supper. And we are now at supper time. We need to show results. You cannot mm. only say, hope, hope, it will be okay. And that's why I believe that when the measures were announced, yeah. uh, the markets <clears throat> responded positively. When the trade measures were announced, the market has responded negatively. Right. The market is not stupid. You know, friends, so that's why we really need not to play with fire. You know, Francine, one of the things that's so interesting here is a research note I saw this week that talked about a president who wants to have dessert before his vegetables, which I guess is the same illusion that we hear from Dr. Frankel on breakfast and lunch. I, mean, I know in I know at Chernobyl you're having dessert. You're having dessert before vegetables. 
Are you kidding me? I only have Sundays or banana splits for both breakfast, but also lunch and dinner. But only in Chernobyl, Tom, not when we're back and in London. And it's only because of time zones that we, well, our dessert time is their breakfast. Of course, <laughs> otherwise we eat the healthy stuff. Um, but Dr. Frankel, when you look at the Fed, right, and what you're talking about, hope, is basically animal spirits in the United States. So you have a tax cut that should help with investment, but then if you're a chief executive with a supply chain that could be affected by the trade war or tariffs, then you'd be thinking about kind of, you know, what you do next. Does it mean that you believe that chief executives will invest more or are they holding back because of the trade tensions? Well, I think that uh, those are two distinct, though complementary issues. Both relate to public policy and in this regard are complementary. However, they are distinct because they affect the economy in different ways and both need to be addressed. For the past decade, I'm talking about the decade since the burst of the financial crisis, the Federal Reserve has been extremely active in stimulating the economy and properly so. Governments were somewhat dysfunctional and in this regard monetary policy have even had to step beyond the normal boundaries. Now that the economy has or is recovering, I think it is perfectly good time for the Fed not only to continue normalization, but to continue it on an ongoing basis. For example, we know the Fed has announced 2018 there will be several tax high, uh, rates hikes. Yeah. 2019, same. And you will not overshoot, I can tell you. And the reason why you will not overshoot, you are so far away from any concept of long-run equilibrium. Of course, it is not run by an automatic pilot and by a robot. That's why the policy is data dependent, but not in an opportunistic way, but in a strategic way. Are, are you nervous in any way, shape or form that actually the Fed is not run by an academic? And so we seem to get a feeling that uh, Jay Powell is going to look at the economy before making a decision, but won't go into too much theory about what can happen to the economy in one, two years down the line. Is that dangerous? Jay Powell is the chairman of the Fed. He is not a newcomer. He has been in the Fed for years. The Fed is composed of a board of governors and the uh, presidents of the various regions. It has fantastically good staff. <laughs> the machinery is working, has been working, and there is, I have no concern whatsoever. It is a very congenial, well-functioning body. So I believe that uh, this is the last of my concerns. Professor Frankel, as we, as we look forward here, we go to the IMF spring meetings. Francine and I hope to be there uh, with good conversation. What do we need to accomplish at the IMF spring meetings, given the trade discourse of this early April? Well, we need to make sure that anyone who can speak up about the dangers of trade war should speak up. You remember 1931. A very well-intentioned senator named uh, Smoot and a very well-intentioned congressman named, named Holly together joined to pass the Smoot-Holly tariff. It brought about a huge rise in tariffs across the board, a huge uh, reduction in growth may have been the catalyst for the Great Depression. That's not the direction we want to go. And the International Monetary Fund meeting which is the forum that brings together representatives of all the economies, large and small, the interdependent economies from all over the world, should speak loud and clear, don't destroy the highways, don't destroy the mechanisms that connect us to the rest of the world. That's where prosperity comes. And by once you say, you, you know, the whole reason data of the IMF and the World Bank, they were born in the aftermath of the Second World War where there was the notion that the world must rebuild itself, recover, re-engage, and create a mechanism by which the international interests are internalized into policies, hence the fora that brings all of these countries together. This means that we should cherish this fora. Always there is room for improvement, but we should cherish it, not start shooting, talk, talk, talk.